Hi, my name is John Sustar, and I'm a marketing engineer in the CDS group at Train. Today, I'm going to be talking about modeling ice storage systems in Trace 700. In this video, I'll start with defining ice storage, which is a type of thermal energy storage for chilled water systems. We'll then identify some common configurations and modes of operation for these systems. We'll take a look at Trace, and I'll show you some key inputs that are used for modeling ice storage. And lastly, I'll show you some reports that can be used to analyze the operation and performance of this system. The purpose of thermal energy storage is to shift the cooling equipment operation from high cost to low cost times of the day. This typically means that the chiller is making ice during the nighttime or off peak periods, and then the ice tank is being discharged during the daytime or the on peak periods. In air conditioning applications, both ice storage and chilled water storage are used. The benefit of ice storage over chilled water storage is that ice storage requires a smaller volume of storage per BTU of energy stored in chilled water. This is due to the latent capacity stored during water's phase change from solid to liquid. Here is an example of a bank of CalMac ice storage tanks installed at the University of Arizona. This system consists of 156 ice tanks each with a capacity of 150 ton hours. To charge these tanks, the system utilizes 21 chillers. The ice storage tanks reduce both electricity consumption and demand during peak pricing times, which translates into an annual energy cost savings of around $500,000. So what are the benefits of ice storage? The most commonly known benefit of ice storage are lower utility bills. Because electric grids typically experience the greatest demand for electricity during the daytime hours, many electric utility companies have established rate structures with time of use rates and demand charges. By melting ice to satisfy building cooling loads during the peak periods when the cost of electricity is high, you can achieve electricity cost savings. Operation of the chiller is shifted to the off-peak period during which the cost of consuming electricity is lower and demand charges are lower or non-existent. The chiller is used during the off-peak period to freeze the water inside the storage tanks, storing the thermal energy until the on-peak period. Another advantage is that since ice storage is helping meet peak cooling loads, the chiller equipment may be able to be downsized as long as the downsized chiller has sufficient time to refreeze the water inside the tanks during that off-peak period. Lastly, downsized chillers may result in smaller electrical service to the building, which will reduce your installed cost. While the ice storage tanks add to the system installed cost, the impact of downsizing the mechanical equipment may offset some of that added cost. Additionally, some utility companies offer rebates or other incentives for ice storage. Here, I'm showing you an example cooling load profile for a commercial building. The hours when the cost of electricity is high are often referred to as the on-peak period. The off-peak period refers to the hours when the cost of electricity is lower. In this example, noon to 8 p.m. is defined as the on-peak period. All other hours are defined as the off-peak period. One strategy for reducing on-peak costs is to design the system with full ice storage so that there is enough ice capacity to meet all the cooling loads during the entire discharge period. As seen in this ice storage example, you can see three modes of operation. From midnight to 6 a.m., the chiller charges the tank. From 6 a.m. to noon, the chiller satisfies the cooling load in the building. During this time, the tank remains fully charged. At noon, which is the beginning of the on-peak period, the ice storage meets all the cooling loads in the building. And by the end of the on-peak period at 8 p.m., the chiller operates to satisfy the cooling loads. Due to the amount of ice storage required in a full storage system, the installed cost may not be feasible. So, many ice storage systems are designed with only enough capacity to satisfy a portion of the on-peak cooling loads. This type of system is often called a partial storage system. In a partial storage scenario, the ice storage meets a portion of the cooling loads during the on-peak time from noon to 8 p.m. 
while the chiller operates to supplement the tank. When designing ice storage systems with partial storage, it's typical that the ice will meet roughly 30% of the total design day cooling loads. During the discharge period, the instantaneous cooling capacity is limited to 10 to 30 tons per tank, depending on the operating conditions and temperatures. Another consideration is that chillers lose around one third of their capacity during charging modes due to the need to create colder evaporator leaving temperatures to build the ice. And lastly, it typically takes between eight and 10 hours to make ice in a partial storage system. Now let's go into Trace and I will show you how to quickly create an ice storage system using the plant wizard. First, click on the create plants and on the right side you'll see the plant wizard button. Now this plant wizard has several pre-configured plants that you can choose from. If you scroll towards the middle of this list you'll see a couple of different ice storage plants that you can select. Each ice storage plant has a description below. There are a couple of configurations with ice storage a common configuration for larger systems that utilize centrifugal chillers for making ice is to have the chillers downstream of the ice. During the off-peak period, the chiller cools the glycol water mixture to a temperature of 23 degrees Fahrenheit. The mixture is then circulated through tubes within the ice tank where it freezes the surrounding water. When cooling is needed during the on-peak period, the glycol water mixture circulates through the ice storage tanks melt the ice. To model a chiller that is downstream of the ice tanks, there are three options available in the plant wizard. There's a plant with one ice chiller and a base loaded chiller without ice, a plant with one ice chiller and a plant with two ice chillers. I'm going to select the one with two ice chillers and click yes to proceed. Trace will build this plant and if you expand the tree in the cooling plant 001, you'll notice the thermal storage and two ice chillers. Next, click on cooling equipment where you will define the capacity and energy rate of both the cooling mode and tank charging mode of the ice chiller. Another common configuration is to model an air-cooled screw or scroll ice chiller that is upstream of the ice tanks in the chiller upstream configuration, there is the added benefit of increased chiller efficiency during the discharge period when the cooling load is being met by both the ice tanks and the chiller. During that time, the chiller can operate with higher evaporator leaving temperatures since there is a mixing valve to mix the ice storage water with the evaporator leaving water. In the plant wizard, there are two options to choose from for the chiller upstream configuration. There is one air-cooled chiller and a two air-cooled chillers in parallel. I'm going to select the one air-cooled chiller. And because the upstream configuration allows for an increased efficiency during the discharge period, you will notice that there are two chillers created for this one chiller. One represents the chiller during discharge mode and the other chiller represents the cooling mode and tank charging mode. If you click on controls, you'll notice that there is a schedule for each one of these equipments that schedules them on and off depending on the mode of operation. So now I'm going to go through the process of setting up ice storage without using the plant wizard. So I'm going to delete my current plant. Now I'm going to drag a water-cooled chiller directly onto my cooling plant. Additionally, I will throw thermal storage onto my water-cooled chiller. Now this is modeling thermal storage at the equipment level. And at this point, I can enter my cooling mode capacity and energy rate, as well as my tank charging capacity and energy rate. Notice that the chiller has a lower capacity and a higher kW per ton during tank charging mode. Additionally, we have to make sure that we enter the pump heads for our primary chilled water pump and our condenser water pump. And at this time, we're going to 
select our thermal storage. There are a couple of thermal storages that come with Trace, as well as some schedules which define the charging, the satisfy load, and discharging periods. I'm going to select one of the predefined schedules. And lastly, this is a step that is often forgotten, but you have to go into the controls window and select available for thermal storage for our equipment schedule. This is very important and will ensure that the tanks will be charged by the ice chiller. Now I'm going to show you how to create thermal storage that is on the plant level. So I'm going to add another chiller. So I'm going to have two chillers that are going to be charging a plant level ice storage bank of tanks. So first I'm going to delete those thermal storages at the equipment level. And I'm going to add a thermal storage to our cooling plant. So this thermal storage is going to be shared among those two chillers which are both capable of making ice. If I click on cooling plant 001 and then click on the plant controls button on the right, there is the thermal storage defined for the plant level. And that's just like defining it on the equipment level in terms of selecting thermal storage and a schedule. All right, so now that I have described everything that you need to define in the project, we're going to jump into the libraries to define our schedule and our thermal storage. First, we'll go into the schedules library, and in, under schedule type, there's a thermal storage schedule. I'm going to select the predefined schedule here. And in the schedule, you'll notice a couple of modes of operation. The charge is the period when the equipment is charging the tank. Discharge is the period when the tanks are being discharged. The other two modes are satisfy no tank and satisfy load. Satisfy no tank means the chiller is operating and um, no, no tank storage is being used during that operation. So it's used to save ice storage between the charge and discharge period. Satisfy load means that the, the chiller will operate to satisfy the load, but the tank will come on if the load exceeds the chiller's capacity. I'm going to copy this schedule, and I'm just going to name it My Thermal Storage so I can identify it. And I'm going to shift my discharge period by, by one hour, so I'm going to make it noon to 6 p.m. instead of that 11 a.m to 5 p.m. I'm going to save that, close out of that library. Next I'm going to go into the thermal storage library where I will define some properties of the tank including the schedule for that thermal storage, the capacity of the tanks, as well as the discharge strategy. The optimized discharge strategy will minimize chiller demand Trace will accomplish this by determining a portion of the load that is met by the chiller so that the ice tank will be discharged to zero by the end of the period of discharging. I'm going to copy this thermal storage and create my own thermal storage library member. I'm going to define the schedule, so I'm going to select the schedule that I created in the schedules library. I'm going to define my storage capacity in ton hours, and then I will keep the discharge strategy at optimize. Now I'm going to go back into the project and I'm going to define my thermal storage with this thermal storage library I just created. So I'll go into plant controls and select my thermal storage on the drop down for type and then click OK. Now after running the simulation with ice storage modeled Trace generates a special report called Thermal Storage. The report provides an hourly profile of ambient conditions and plant level cooling loads, as well as chiller loads, chiller energy consumption, and available thermal storage. This report can be useful to determine the amount of load that the ice tanks are meeting during the discharge period and ensure that the tanks are being charged to full capacity during the charging mode. Note that this report is only available if you are running your analysis in reduced year mode. The other tool to analyze ice storage operation is to use the Trace 700 visualizer, which can be accessed from the graph profiles and energy button in the view results. 
The visualizer has several outputs related to the performance of the ice tanks and chillers. Additionally, one can view the, de the design day cooling load profile using the visualizer, which will help in sizing thermal storage. Selecting ice storage in the comps drop down box on the left will automatically select the output variables specific to ice storage. Here are some additional resources that you can look at if you're looking for more information on ice storage. If you're looking for modeling help, the user's manual and F1 help are great resources. In terms of an applications resource, I would recommend that you check out the website train.com forward slash continuing education where you can find some more design literature and videos on ice storage design. Thanks so much for taking the time to view this video today. If you ever have questions regarding ice storage systems or any other systems that you are trying to model, please feel free to contact the CDS Support Center. Have a good day.